when the bounty hunter was holding Yoda and he fell, that Yoda fell onto a sled called Rosebud. <laughs> Here's what we find out. Uh, we find out that Baby Yoda has been mind controlling Mandalorian the whole time. Ah, like, ooh. you will protect me. And he's like, whatever you say, master. Hey, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt, the Dork Lords. We're here talking about The Mandalorian. Season 1, Episode 5, The Gunslinger. Uh, quick recap. You've got Mandalorian in his ship, the Razor Crest, attacked by a fellow bounty hunter. Mm. Uh, destroys said bounty hunter, but uh, in process, ship incapacitated, lands on a familiar desert planet. Yeah. One Tatooine. Sure. Uh, in order to fund said repairs of ship, uh, takes... Somewhat ill-advised bounty. He has some second thoughts, but the money's too good. We'll talk more about this, but generally speaking, uh, goes with a rookie bounty hunter, Toro, off past the Dune Sea in search of Fennec, this assassin that the bounty's on. They have a, a you know dueling uh, bounty hunter type uh, situation. Um, eventually, through machinations, which we'll talk about. Um, Toro kills Fennec, maybe, then double crosses Mando, trying to take the baby and Mando into the guild, knowing that uh, he's basically trying to get into the guild mm. himself. And this mm. will be his big ticket in, because they'll be like, oh, you're famous. You took out the guy that just destroyed most of the guild. Uh, Mandalorians have none of that. Uh, kills our rookie bounty hunter. Baby Yoda is fine, and they fly away. All right, so... I, I, in a nutshell, that's your that's your episode. There's some people that are starting to say like the shows, you know, like the last two episodes in particular have been somewhat episodic in terms of land on planet, hand Yoda to like a babysitter, babysitter, go deal with thing, pick up baby Yoda, leave everyone, fly away. Um, so people looking for more of a buddy cop kind of thing, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Get him, baby Yoda. I'll cover you. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, and baby, Yoda, baby Yoda's 50. He can learn to speak. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> let's get a little, little dialogue going. Um, so. Baby Columbo. I still think the sample size is small, and so I'm not panicking about it. But I can understand that, like, there was this thought that originally that there was going to be this overarching narrative, perhaps, that we were going to, ooh, this is interesting. But we do feel like there's a lot of bottle type episodes, you know, just in what we've seen so far. Sure. Um, again, it's only five episodes. I'm willing to cut them some slack. Um, and I did actually enjoy this episode. I some people have been like, "Oh, it's fan service." I actually liked going back to Tatooine. I was yeah, cool with was like fine. seeing Tatooine post, uh, you know, the Battle of Endor. It seems like there's a lot fewer people there. For one thing, like yeah. in, the, in the cantina in particular, sure. yeah. uh, the cantina is now run by a droid or as a droid bartender. Whereas back in the day, it was like no droids. Yeah, so maybe one day they rebelled and took it over. Yeah, they probably. That's, that'd be nice to see. This in your flashback. It would be interesting. Yeah, Mandalorian in a town run by droids would be like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> then he step I hate this town. I hate this town. Um, I hate droid town. The fact that Toro who is uh, Bobby Cannavale's son, mm. who we're going to be talking about with Mr. Robot. No, we're uh, not. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> not in this episode, but come back for that. Um, but he is, looks like he's sitting in the same chair that Han Solo was sitting in with the McClunky incident. I got to do another McClunky. I kind of dropped the McClunky ha mm. at the end of these things, but I got to put one back in because they were sitting in the McClunky table. That's right. <laughs> so we have to McClunky this up. Um... And yeah, he was basically, uh, I don't think Toro himself knew about necessarily Han Solo and was trying to be Han Solo, but that character is certainly a version of like, I'm sure. a young Han Solo. Yeah. I'm just looking to make a name for myself. And I had, he had like a little blaster thing, yeah. quick draw McGraw. Mm. Um, and he was sitting kind of similarly to sure. the way Han was. Yeah. He did not shoot Mandalorian. No, he didn't. Um, no. Wanted to. Actually, that's at, well, this is out of order, but when he's got his, his uh, pistol trained on Mandalorian at the end. Yes. And he looks like he's about to shoot at him. Sure. Like, really? 
<laughs> is that are you just going to shoot yourself? Is that what's going to? Is going to just deflect off and just oh. bounce and hit you? <laughs> he's he's wearing like he can stop sniper rifle. Right. We've seen him stop laser blasts. I'm not sure that that shot would have done anything to him. I don't know. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that close. If he's a good enough shot. Maybe you could shoot in between, in between where the, like the underneath little plates. The, oh, got you. The yeah, little, got your little neck there. The neck space. Yep. Uh, I don't know. It just it is interesting. Anytime I see Mando in danger, I'm like, is he? I'm <laughs> still <So> wondering. <laughs> like, uh, so far, you know, the armor's done pretty well. All right. Anyway, so. Um, so that's that why cool. you're imagining it. At some point, he'll be yes. outside. I got. I, he has to, right? The, Even uh, in this episode, it really pointed it out. Actually, I love the line. When yes. he's been shot a couple of times, and they're like, well, we're going to make this run. He's like, oh, like I had my best car on. And uh, Toro says, I don't have best car. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was maybe my favorite line yeah, of the whole yeah. thing. But it does, it points out that, yeah, he's yes. invulnerable, yes. essentially. It's well. like he's got to be vulnerable. we <laughs> got to make him vulnerable at some point. So in these last three episodes, I'm telling you, <laughs> that best car is uh, going bye bye somehow. Mm. Um, or there's. Beskar penetrating shots or whatever, kind of like when uh, Luke Cage. Right. And they had the oh wait, yeah, yeah, this yeah. particular ammunition. Yeah. Is anti Luke Cage yeah. ammunition? So <laughs> yeah. they had to do something like that. Yeah. I also you know, I had the little callback to the prequels, the little uh, the little repair droids. Yes. Uh, which again, obviously, uh, Ando hates. He hates them. Don't have them fix my ship. Hates those droids. Uh, we had Amy Sedaris. Yes. Showing up. We did. Um, and. Uh, Ming Na Wen, I believe. Uh, right, right. Uh, she was a uh, Fennec. Yes. Um, so we had some little little cameo. Well, sure. they're more than cameos. They actually had reasonable part. I mean, maybe Fennec's part was more cameo. Which also, she had a fight scene. Yeah. Um, Amy Sedaris had a fairly, you know, reasonable sized part. In yes. This, in this thing, she, uh, and I appreciated the fact that I was kind of expecting at some point a turn where she was going to do something like. Ah, I'll keep the child unless you do a thing or whatever. But she was just like yeah. a good-hearted mechanic, yep. and kind of like what you see is what you get. Yeah, which I appreciated because it seemed like there's a lot of <laughs> double crossing going on and everything. So I was like, all right, fine. A also, another thing I appreciated was they had a fun callback to the Tuscan Raiders, but they put a little different spin on that. Um, first, they did the the thing right out of uh, New Hope, which was look at them in the distance. Oh, it's a bantha. And then, boop, there's the, the suspect <laughs> right. Oh, oh, Jesus. Um, and so they did the same thing here. It was like, well, you can ask him yourself. And suddenly, magically, there they are. Uh, they're there to trade. Yeah. Or sure basically right. say, I think it's like, you can go safely through our lands if you give us those uh, binoculars. Uh, and the fact that Mando knows Tuscan Raider yeah. sign language. Uh, very interesting. He seems very knowledgeable about Tatooine. Of course, episodes ago, he called... Baby Yoda, a Womp Rat, uh, which is a native species to Tatooine. Um, I don't know. He just, I feel like, I mean, he certainly has been there at some point, but I feel like maybe he's got even more of a history there. Like, he's been he's been here several times. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we only have gotten this uh, view into his life. Um, he can kind of speak Jawa. Right. I mean, if, I wonder if... Uh, I mean, we don't know how many jobs he goes on a year. Um, we don't know mm -hmm. the average length of those jobs either. I mean, these jobs have been fairly, oh, well, that's what the fob is telling me, is so I just got to take a day or two to get to this planet yeah, and like, then like, another day to get somebody. It's like somebody. a video game where you're like, all right, I got uh, 30 minutes. Ah, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, he might, maybe he um, bases around a particular planet enough gotcha. to learn a language or something like that. Um, and he's been doing it since he's apparently since he's been a kid, or at least you know a young man. And it's, it's, he's not a young. He man was a young Toro once upon a time. That's right. So, but he had a helmet on. So yeah. So I mean, my conception of it is just like he just goes around learning languages because he's got to talk to people to figure stuff out. Uh, I guess it it makes it feel like it's a smaller universe when you've got like oh that, Tatooine, I've been there. Whereas you would think almost like in the litany of potential planets seems unlikely mm. to be like you call out a plant like, oh yeah I know the I mean, sign language or the local population it certainly population. makes sense like, really? that you would have although I mean you would need a protocol droid to be able to learn all those languages on yeah. the computer and maybe he's just got some unnatural like you know natural ability with languages so he's able to pick stuff up or, or is it possible it's his suit probably not but like, like in other words That'd just, be interesting, on yeah. this view screen it shows him like 
how to sign. Yeah, 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 He's yeah, like, okay, yeah, we yeah. just follow. Mm, 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 mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or just uh-huh. maybe there's some kind of rudimentary, you know, just take over. Mm. Oh, sure, the gloves mm-hmm. do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's working. I hope this is the right language. Um, but in any case, uh, he chooses a nonviolent way yes. in that moment. Sure. Um, and it is interesting, he does know about Fennec's reputation and is not just like, again, he, he seems to realize, uh, he doesn't just take every job uh, with right. the idea of like, oh, I'm better. Like, he has like a sense of his place almost, or like, yeah, actually, these people, that, oh, that's a pretty good person. I, I'd rather not, uh, it's not worth the money to me. Right. Um, until it is, but I guess until, <laughs> oh, I'll get all the money? Uh, all right. Um yeah, yeah. It's it, his moral code is interesting. I do like mm. seeing it unfold a little bit. For instance, when Toro breaks the fob, and he's like, in other words, yes. he doesn't trust uh, right. that Mando won't just go off on his own. He right. goes, ah, it's in my head. Yeah. I think I would have been like, all right, we're done. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, never mind. I can't trust you even to make the deal originally, so screw you. Well, I mean, you know, that's obvious, like, you know, I don't trust you to run off without giving me the thing. I mean, that's all. Yeah. But, but. he, he kind of does. I mean, Mando, it's like, I'll go, you know, I'll go get the do back. Eventually, he argues with Toro a little bit, but Toro's like, hey, I'm, I don't trust you. And so, right. it's Mando that has to go and get yes, the do back, and he true. does. I mean, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's just interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I, yeah, I guess him needing money um, may feel artificial, but, you know, he needed money. He needed money. He needed money. Um, and he is, yeah, he's still, we're seeing, pretty bad at day-to-day parenting. Um, <laughs> he has affection for little baby Yoda, I believe, but he does not know how to actually raise baby Yoda. True. No, he doesn't, you know. Um, he, and he, he keeps leaving behind anybody be, who uh, is actually good at it. He should have a bunch of rocks that he has Baby Yoda to lift, and then he should um, be sitting on uh, Baby Yoda's shoulder as he runs through the forest, you know? Uh, that, would be, that would be awesome to see him ho- clinging on to a little Baby Yoda, a giant Mandalorian robot thing. Have Baby Yoda balance on his head as he lifts. Those rocks. Oh, oh, I see. Baby Yoda would be on him. I was picturing the other way around. That Mandalorian's on yeah, top of Baby that's Yoda. That's what I'm oh, saying. Okay, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, those, all the different training sequences that ba- Just Yo- that Yoda around. did. Yeah. Baby Yoda is Luke. Yep. And <laughs> yep. Yoda is our Mandalorian. Yep, that's right. Uh, that's great. No, I like it. That would uh, <laughs> that would be visually interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ming Na's character uh, Fennec uh, shrewdly sizes up the situation of saying, "Oh, okay." This rookie guy just wants to make a name for himself. Well, you know, he, you know. So she says, "Look, you've got a much bigger bounty than me. It's hanging right at the Mandalorian. He killed a bunch of folks at the guild, and he's got a, a target." And we saw earlier that Toro saw a little baby yep. Yoda, so he puts two and two together. Yep. He's like, "Oh, he does have the target." Um, a little switcheroo when he shoots Ming Na. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe he'd just be really stupid and just let her go and then be like, "Oh." But he doesn't in no, that moment. He's, he's not that stupid. He's not quite that stupid. <laughs> so uh, he shoots her in the stomach. Yes. She collapses. Um, later we see Mando does get the do back and, and rides up and uh, sees her in the same spot. And then later our little, it's not a post credit because it's before the credits, but it's like the last image we see. Right. She's still lying there in the desert. She is. Kind of in the same spot. Right. And a, and a mysterious figure walks up uh, with a cape. We do see the, the bottom uh, of the cape. Uh, Lando. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's Lando. Mando. Doesn't uh, uh, Boba Fett have a cape? Boba Fett has a cape. That's there what is, I've heard some speculation that perhaps it's Boba Fett because apparently people were, people were listening to the footsteps. Yeah, of the he's like, oh, he's got and, spurs. Yeah, and this. I'm not buying that. Yeah. They jingle, jingle, jingle. Jingle, jingle. No one else, the, no one in the galaxy could have heavy boots that jingle a little bit. Yeah, you wouldn't want people to think you're a Mandalorian. Uh, so, yes, obviously, uh, Boba Fett last seen dying, well, <laughs> falling into a Sarlacc pit on yeah, Tatooine. Maybe the, the, so maybe he it's came not, out. Yeah, and, maybe uh, he had to spit it out, actually, yeah, because right. of all the Well, armor. there is a... 
there is some you know legends thing where he got out of the pit. Oh. He is still well. technically so. Yes, it, there is a possibility that it could be Boba Fett and that they were going to try to figure out a Boba Fett versus Mandalorian finale or something for this. I've heard, also heard it speculated don't think I don't think that uh, it is the clone, no, our twin of uh, uh, Ming-Nan's character. Yeah, Ming-Nan's character. Uh, mm. That that sounds like the worst option to me. If it was oh. just like mm. this character we just met last episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Died or like, but my twin. <laughs> Whatever. Like, what does that even mean? I, anyway, I, that would be. I would be very disappointed. She might be like Kenny. You know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> you killed Finnick. <laughs> Damn you. Um, I think it's most likely this character uh, that uh, Giancarlo Esposito is playing. He's a moff. He's basically the client, Werner Herzog's boss. We haven't seen him yet in the show, but we've seen him in the trailers. Sure. And we know he's coming, and he's only got three Mingo. episodes to show up. We do see also from the trailers for the season, Bill Burr is playing this, uh, seems like another bounty hunter. He's mm. got weapons, and he's got like an automated turret thing on his shoulder or something. Uh, so he's got to show up in the last three episodes. I feel like, yeah, if if it was, let's say, Esposito's character, this moth, why, why would he be out in the middle of the desert? It doesn't make sense except to say that maybe he's, really really interested in baby Yoda mm. and so he's trying to like keep the number of people uh, you know who are in the know down or something. I don't know no, he's you're... sending everyone off after baby Yoda yeah, so yeah, yeah. that doesn't seem that likely but yeah. um in yeah. any case yeah so I mean that's a, and then yeah essentially you know, I don't know I, just, I wish the show was more now <laughs> I mean I don't I would say it's not a character we've already met because then you would just see that character if it was like Carl Weathers' character, for instance, right. you'd just be like, "Oh, well, just show him." Like, yeah. so they're deliberately keeping this person mysterious. Sure. Yeah. Um, but we said, sorry, you said you wish the show was more. Now, what in what way? Um, you know, we're, we only have like two episodes left, right? Three, three I think. Three episodes. And there are thirty like minutes they, each. I feel like they so, could have. So yeah. Like, Boop. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just wish they'd. You know, I don't know. I wish they'd told more story in this time. That's all. You know, it would have been, yeah. I, you know, I wish that I wish it would have been more ambitious. It's a simple show, you know, and it makes. Unfortunately, it makes like I haven't really seen like well, like maybe a couple of episodes of the animated series. Yeah, it does. I mean, and with those, Dave Filoni being a part of this, it does feel a little like Rebels those were good, but I feel like they had a quality of like an animated show. Mm. I mean, you know, it's where you it's, fly into plant new planet, meet new race of planet, deal with thing, fly away. Yeah. And that's kind of what we've seen here. It's like fighting. Yeah, and I just, you know, it'd be nice if they, you know, I I don't know why we couldn't have followed the uh, the doctor and learned more about what's going on with him or whatever. It's like something to have another aspect of that world that would have been interesting. Um, Maybe know. even a, I mean, we've had a few moments of uh, points of view that aren't the Mandalorian, but for the most part, yeah. it's his point right. of view. So maybe we... Right, some world building might be uh, a day in the life of Werner Herzog's character yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Or, um, or even, you know, like, uh, I thought it was revolutionary, even though I don't think they've done as much with it as, I mean, it sort of squandered that uh, sort of innovation. But, you know, in the the third trilogy, having a stormtrooper as a character, you know, but because he's, you know, why can't they just spend the whole time with the... Stormtroopers, you know, especially now that they're out of the you right, know. right, right. This is like, oh, I lost my job. Yeah. Now yeah. what do I do? Yeah. Even though I'm known as a stormtrooper, I what, how do I go about with my my life? You know, yeah. Yeah. So it's simple, and I think in a way you could argue that uh, it was right to do it simple because you can uh, certainly uh, argue that um, with the third trilogy they tried to keep some elements. You know, they try not to go crazy because they're starting it up again. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I guess it's just good that uh, hopefully they'll try more in the second season. Yeah, I hear you. I, I'm, it is still early. Five episodes. Uh, they're, they can still kind of do some of the stuff that we're hoping they do, I guess. But, uh, you're, but there's I think a, it's more likely, hopefully, the second season. Um, or that some shows are just be more ambitious. Yeah, than it's, you I got gotcha. you. You know, it's fine. Let's talk real, real quick. 
I know <laughs> you're, you're going to roll your eyes on this, but oh, uh, let's get, we'll get my eyes ready here. Okay, okay. The oh, is it your thing? Oh, yeah, God, the okay. thing. I mean, so at the very end, we've got Toro. He's holding Baby Yoda hostage. Mando does a little flare trick. Oh, I'm blinded again, and then shoots him, and he falls off the gangplank with Baby Yoda. And they're they're worried. Uh, the Amy Sedaris's character and Mando they run over. <laughs> Not they don't care about Toro. They're like he's dead. They're like oh, what? oh and they roll him over because they expect the little Yoda is going to be like squished underneath our dead Toro character. Yeah. But no. No. He's not even in the vicinity. No, he's not even in the vicinity. He comes out from behind some crates and is like, just fine. He's just fine. He's not not even like, ow, my arm. No, or, ow. He wouldn't say that. No, he would. wouldn't. He'd be like, ooh, 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 ooh. He would do exactly that. No. Um, but he's not. No, no he's no, completely he's fine. fine. So, mm. how? How, sure. Is that is my question. Yeah, how and could so that it, possibly be? It could just be convenient editing for a puppet. <laughs> like, you know what? Just... Put him over by the crates. Yep. He fell and rolled. Yep. Oh, and he's fine. Ooh. He's like a little little roll, like uh, when Yoda does his lightsaber fight. Back, like yeah, spinny ball. Uh, that, Occam's that, uh, Occam's edit. Occam's edit. It seems a little lazy to do that, but that could be that. That's probably what it is. There you go. The other option, though, is they're throwing in these moments when he, he is using force powers, and we're just not cluing in on it you know it's like oh he's just a kid and he's he's fine but could he have theoretically used force powers they go oh i'm about to be squashed bamf over by crates um maybe maybe i don't know yeah no all right never mind i mean you know uh maybe they'll have the next episode uh mandalorian in bed tossing and turning how 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 did he do it <laughs> How was he not crushed? And we can see a number of you know montages of oh oh the the, the bounty hunter falling and how how so <laughs> you know yes yes uh, I have an entire montage you know, of, uh, of yes. wondering whether <laughs> how how can you do this All right. but yeah anyway you know, it's like um uh you see uh, the Incredibles three I did ah so yeah maybe that's what it is. Like, poof, ah, poof, you know, this little Jack Jack popping around. So he'll be trying to chase Baby Yoda around. Oh, uh, come back. Where'd baby, he go? What's going on with him? Baby Yoda, baby, baby Jack Jack. There you go. A little, little parallel there, sir. Well done. So anyway. So yeah, um, so we got to wait for him. It's probably nothing. Wait for him to erupt into flames. It just you know? seemed weird that they would go to that length of showing this guy falling with Baby Yoda. And then have Baby Yoda completely you know, fine. And or fine. also have him, you know, turn into like a devil Yoda, you know, right. sort of like gremlins, but, you know, like Jack Jack. Or Jack, Jack, Jack. Ah, yeah, right, exactly, you see. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. They did feed Baby yeah. Yoda after midnight. And yeah, then, so there you go. Oh, mm. yikes. Yeah. Do not do that. That's just bad. Hell on earth. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I, I anticipate that by the eighth episode, we will see verified use of the force again from baby yoda oh yeah but you know that's coming but, but i'm just saying is it gonna be some like and then they'll flash back to all the times when he was <laughs> when he used the force at other times oh he's been using it all along uh, it turned out that what happened was when the bounty hunter was holding yoda and he fell that yoda fell onto a sled called rosebud <laughs> <laughs> and that disappeared and the Oh, uh, the bounty hunter thought, I'm going to fall on the sled, but no. Here's what we find it out. Disappeared. Here's what we find out. Uh, we find out that Baby Yoda has been mind controlling Mandalorian the whole ah, time. Like, ooh. you will protect me. And he's like, whatever you say, Master. Mm. There was a second gunslinger. Uh, second gunslinger who shot Baby Yoda out from under the <laughs> bounty hunter as he was falling. If you watched the blaster, it would have had to have curved. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was certainly... There was there was more than one gunslinger. I totally agree with that. Um, and they never landed on a moon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if right. you see that one shot of the Mandalorian, it looks like he's standing in a very weird sort of position, really. Totally How could you agree. possibly... When, he's, when his cape is flying, when yeah, he's on the Dune yeah, Sea, yeah. that's not no, real. No, that is CGI. Not, yeah, they just definitely. faked it. Yep. It's all fake. That's right. Uh, all right, anyway, we'll be back <laughs> talking about all of the fake and real things from Mandalorian, as well as Watchmen and Mr. Robot. 
uh, in uh, days to come. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Name's Toro. Toro. McClunky. <laughs>